In this video, we'll explore how to use conditional statements to further replicate a real user experience and create meaningful test scenarios. First, we'll use a form to show how duplicate steps can be grouped under loop actions. Click the Group Actions icon to automatically organize the scenario, utilizing loops wherever possible. Notice that steps governed by a loop are indented underneath a loop action. As we play back our scenario, we can see how the loops work to repeat actions. Our next example uses an employment application to demonstrate the use of the loop action with a component. Components help to streamline scenarios, grouping actions by business process. They can also be used to encase a series of actions to be called multiple times within a scenario, as is the case in this example. Here, our component, named References, adds a personal reference to the employment application. The name, email address, and phone number data is pulled from a CSV file, which has been linked to the component. Each time the scenario loops through the component, a new row of values is pulled from the file. The scenario uses the loop action to call the component three times. Watch as we play it back. Our next example introduces the case and switch actions. This scenario uses a loop to call a component again three times. Within the component, named survey, there are five cases, numbered one through five. The component has a CSV file attached containing five values, numbers 1 through 5. Depending on which value is randomly selected, the component switches to and executes the corresponding case. It should be noted here that when a step fails inside a loop, the loop will skip to the top and continue with the next pass until all loop iterations have been completed. To incorporate on failure behavior, an exit loop action should be added. For more information, please refer to the Understanding and Using on Failure video in this series. Now watch as our scenario loops through the component three times and randomly selects survey answers. On the back end, we see that the survey database was updated with the answers our scenario gave to the survey. Our last example features the if-then-else action. Here, we have a scenario that opens weather.com and retrieves the current weather for a location, again, randomly selected from a CSV file. Our scenario then looks for a sunshine icon which, if found, causes the scenario to open Notepad and report that it's a sunny day suitable for surfing. 
If not found, the document reports that it's too cold to surf. Note that continue on failure is checked, so the scenario advances if the image is not found. The key to the scenario is the execution status variable named surfstat, which triggers the course of action taken by the if-then-else statement. Scenario Builder's graphical view clearly illustrates the statement structure. Now watch as we play our scenario. Well, it's an overcast day in Palm Springs, which is just as well, considering there aren't really any places to surf in the California desert. We'll see you next time.